everyone. Uh, um, today, I am very happy to be giving a presentation here. I'd like to talk about data wrangling for machine learning and other usage in R. Yeah, this is me. Uh, I'm working as a data scientist in Korea. Uh, today, now, I'm starting with a simple story. Um, I'm a data sci I have been a data scientist for more than 15 years, and um, my friends or my um, my friends or other people ask me about a data scientist, how glamorous or how beautiful the data science is. Um, they think I can program self-driving cars or wonderful machine learnings, and my, my or they, their data analysis and software could be lead down for the humanity. <laughs> and it looks so cool, but um, I cannot say anything, and I just say, oh dear. <laughs> and a new survey of data scientists and machine learners shows that those expectations need adjusting. Because, um, yes, because they think just the modeling or making algorithm, but yes, the biggest challenge, but the biggest challenge is the training data and making the data. Because, and because the, they are very mundane, and cleaning dirty data is quite hard. Yeah, this comes from a survey conducted by data science community Kaggle, and maybe you may know, and which was acquired by Google earlier in this year. <laughs> Many Kaggle members responded to the questionnaire, and it's about the biggest barriers faced at work. The most common answer was dirty data, yes, the followed by a lack of talent in the field. Mm, yes, I think you may know that there's a joke that 80% of data science is cleansing the data and 20% is complaining about cleaning the data. <laughs> yeah, in reality, yes, and they are really varies and data cleansing is a much higher proportion of data science than an outsider would expect. Yes, actually, according to the Kaggle CEO and founder, uh, Anthony Goldblum, Training model is typically a relatively small proportion. I think it's less than 10% and what a machine learner and data science does. And I agree and maybe you agree. Yes, data set for machine learning should be the following qualities. They should be clean and consistent and have only simple ties and have both clearly defined predictors and dependent variables and be scaled and discretized properly. But as you know, they are very, there are very, very few clean and tidy, perfect data like that. Um, most of our data is messy and dirty, and they look so poor, and you might be ashamed of your data. Yes, as you all know, tidy data sets are all alike, but every messy data set is messy in its own way. Think about your data sets. Most data sets are poor. Unless um, your data set came from a highly designed experiment. Yes, um, I saw various data and um, our data may consist of raw and mesh files. And some of our data may be from various different sources and repositories. And you may not even remember where they came from. Sometimes they are too huge to control or have too many columns to check and they have made different categories and criteria than you knew before. They may consist of meaningless text and unstructured data, lots of errors, omitted fields, various formats, and missing values. Of course, they may be poor for other reasons. Yes, therefore, I have to wrangle data if I want to use for machine learning. Of course, I need to wrangle data even when I want to simply analyze it. Uh, even if it is not for difficult machine learning, uh, data wrangling is necessary. And most people do not know the necessity for handling data. And yes, yeah, some of my customers ask me, oh, why uh, it, uh, it is slow than they th uh, slower than they think? Mm, yes, because of data wrangling. And some say nowadays data wrangling is not necessary, than, uh, necessary but um, I cannot agree. And however, fortunately, 
there are some great tools for data wrangling, and we, um, as we know, they are holy tools in R, and they are very useful. Because um, in R, I can, uh, we can control the whole proce data process in R. Let me introduce tidy but simply. Um, yes, it, even though we are already familiar with it. There was a tutorial, keynote, and everyone knows uh, tidyverse is important. Um, yes, but um, tidyverse helped me a lot, and we can manage various data processes in R, and I think the most powerful point of tidyverse is data wrangling, especially DPLYR and Margarita are totally But um, there are some data that need more treatment and then we can use other ways. One of my favorite wrangling skills is regular expression. Yes, of course it looks so weird or sometimes it looks old, but we have to control lots of text data, uh, even though it is not text mining. And regular expression is always more powerful than we think. Sometimes we can also use regular expression with numeric data and after all, because they are, they are written in characters. For pattern matching and data cleansing, we can wrangle lots of data with a few lines of regular expressions. And some of you might think that regular expression is too old, but it's very useful, powerful, and you can get used to it very easily. And most of all, it makes you easier to work with other computer programmers or developers. And there are two types of regular expression, and R supports both types with options. And most of all, I want to share that our data may not be poor. Of course, most data looks, look poor, but they may not be as poor as we thought if, if we can think out of the box. Of course, I'm not a data uh, text miner, but change the problem and usage it properly, uh, it is, uh, they are very important. Our data do not have predictors, that, but our problems can be changed to not need predictors. And we thought the problem was classification, but it could be changed with clustering. If I want to classify something, but I have only dirty world data without predictors, then I can solve the problem with text mining or categorical variables with one hot code or clustered words. In many cases, Data is not mesh absolutely, but it depends on the situation. Mm, yes, and let me, talk, uh, let me talk about a specific case. Uh, one of my recent projects was making a restaurant recommendation system with food purchase data and restaurant, uh, restaurant visit data in a food and restaurant application. I had to understand what food customers bought and restaurants sold. And I can meet very, very, very the food names. Yes, look at this. Um, it's in the case of fried chicken. Yes, you can, uh, you can recognize that there are different words, even though they are Korean, and sometimes special characters, and sometimes Chinese characters. Yes, but actually they are similar, um, similar dishes, fried chicken. Yeah, many restaurants sell fried chicken under various names, and I cannot fix it, and um, application system cannot fix it because it is own, f uh, own from their, uh, each restaurant. Yes, and they sell fried chicken under various names, and my recommendation engine had to recommend fried chicken under, uh, after understanding the various names. There are no rules, no categories, no dictionaries, or other no, uh, no system and just dirty names. We have to gather and classify various names manually. And as you know, most people eat various food and most restaurants eat, uh, most restaurants sell various dishes. Moreover, and signature dishes and famous dishes are sometimes different. And a good recommendation system has to recommend good food, not signature food. The problem is not confined to food recommendation. Mm, this is a case of explicit and implicit feedback. And it's a very famous problem. And uh, you can remember that many services remove the task scoring system these days. 
And all I know is that explicit feedback is not useful in many cases, much less the restaurant signature dishes. And I tried to find some rules among the full names and refined with regular expression. Yeah, it worked in text data refinement very powerfully. Yes, it's, it's just a very, very small part of, um, part of the code and um, they are uh, they were more than, yes, 1,000 line. <laughs> Sometimes there are some chain rules and the exact ordering is very important. It's, it was quite hard and t time consuming work, but it's very essential. And you can know how useful regular expression is. I used a strict, uh, strict uh, basic string function general, such as graph and other. And these functions support both types of regular expression. Mm. And, but I use the default type. And for a recommendation system, I had to calculate similarities, but I wonder how I can get similarities among restaurants and users. We could consider uh, restaurants as items and dish, each dish as characteristics because I could not use any other data or business knowledge. Anyway, I had to refine the full name anyway. <laughs> yeah, so you can see there are, uh, there are only maybe Korean words. I, th I think how I can use them simply, and I combined each purchase data as text, and they became a kind of document like this. And I could calculate similarity because we all know TF-IDF if we have documents. With data wrangling with out of box thinking, it was just it was just each purchase data, but now it it becomes a document, and I could change the problem from ordinary item recommendation to a kind of information retrieval. And for them, I used tidy text and sparklier. With TFIDF, I could calculate similarities among documents and get a similarity matrix easily. After data cleansing. I use tidy text for simple text processing with user and shop um, uh, restaurant purchase documents. Tidy text is um, a simple but powerful, powerful package for text mining and sentiment analysis using DPLYR, ggplot2, and other tidyverse tools. It supports various useful functions for text mining which you want to use, such as calculating TFIDF, controlling star words, and tokens, and many more. Yeah, so with these matrices, I could use collaborative filtering with alternating list squares with a little data and algorithm tuning like this. Yeah, it's quite very simple. For your information, the performance of the, this recommendation system was good, and now it's under service construction. Yes, that's all. <laughs> there are are fewer clean data for machine learning than you imagine, but we can make we can make them with the data wrangling. I use just tidy bars, regular expression, and out of the box thinking. That's all. But there are lots of other ways for this and other problems. And what I want to say is that, as you can see, it, oh, it looks so simple after data wrangling. Mm, I believe the most important thing is data wrangling in the whole data mining process. And most data scientists know and we don't like it, but anyway, it's very important. And I believe the era of data wrangling is coming. Then data wrangling skills will become more and more important and tidy verse and other useful tools in our will be noted more. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you for listening. And if you have any questions or comments and let me know. Thank you.
Yes, uh, he asked me about how, uh, how to learn regular expressions. Mm. Yes, it was so hard. <laughs> it was quite hard, and I just find some manuals in on the internet and some books books from O'Reilly. <laughs> yes, but I um, it was very hard, and sometimes uh, in the first time I um, I missed I used wrong. So I um, and other developers helped me a lot. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah? Were there a lot of regular expression stuff or non uh, English characters? Yeah. There were a lot of examples online too, actually, that messed up the way it was. Because usually, uh, a, a lot of regular expression experience comes from just playing around with them, like English text. And they're actually played with like a different language, like an upper numeric system. Mm. Uh, um, were there a lot of online? Sorry, but I, I think I can. Oh, uh, I didn't understand your questions. You, you did regular expressions on Korean. Characters. Yeah, yeah, right. But I've never actually seen regular expressions used for anything that was not just an English character like A, B, or C. I've never seen an actual regular expression used for a Korean character, or a Chinese character, or a Japanese yeah, yeah. character, and all that stuff. Were there a lot of good resources for that to actually learn how to actually use regular expressions in a completely different, or for me, in a completely different, a different kind of character set? Is your question is about the regular expression with uh, uh, other characters, uh, other characters such as Korean, Chinese, or Japanese? Yeah. Yes. It, uh, it's a, yes. It's very, very good question because um, I had a hard time. Uh, I had a hard time with Korean <laughs> and regular expression because uh, yes, uh, yeah, regular expression is more uh, better um, better for English or um, uh, alphabet than Unicode characters. Mm, but yeah, but it is a, mm, it needs some setting, uh, setting for server or R, uh, R studio. But mm, after Unicode setting, it works well. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And any other questions? Okay. Thank you for listening. <laughs>